Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this review of Kubuntu 1904, which is codenamed Aeon Ermine. So to sum up some of the changes quite quickly in this release, we have the Plasma 5.16 desktop. They've narrowly missed out on the 5.17 desktop since it was released on the same day. Many of the KDE applications are at version 1904.3, although a couple have been uplifted to 19.08. Qt4 packages have been removed, and on the subject of packages from the parent distribution Ubuntu, many of the 32-bit packages have also been removed, and as the start to the deb 2 snap transition, so if you try installing Chromium from the deb package, it will, it will automatically install the snap package instead. Kubuntu 1910 is an interim release which will be supported for the next 9 months. Interestingly, I was hearing from Alan Pope that it's about 10 to 20 times more people prefer the long-term support release over the interim releases. So they favor stability instead of uh, short six-month releases. That is two-year stability. We have the Linux kernel version 5.3, Mesa 19.1.6, and the option of installing the NVIDIA drivers version 4.3.5. Looking at the memory usage, we have about 660 meg of RAM in use, although I've just opened a couple of little things. And I have to mention this is the full install of Kubuntu. I've actually got a minimal install as well, which I'll show you in a moment. But I thought I would start with the stock version here. Uh, the minimal version I've customized quite heavily. The Kubuntu team have left this Plasma desktop with a very standard layout. We have the application launcher in the bottom left hand side. The currently open applications would appear there in that panel. On the right-hand side, we have the notification and system area, digital clock with a link to the calendar, show desktop button, and the panel configuration. They've gone with the folder view for the default desktop layout. So you can switch between that or the desktop view. So the desktop view won't have any icons, but the folder view, the folder view will allow you to have links to applications, documents, or folders on your system. There's quite a few different wallpapers included on the system, including some of the older Plasma wallpapers. I have to say I do like the stock KDE wallpapers. They do vary with each release. A little thing to show there, you can turn off that desktop toolbox there on the hamburger menu on the top right hand side, so I could have a completely clean desktop. The KDE desktop is very customizable and with some customizations being quite simple to do. So I could change the application dashboard there by simply right clicking on the application launcher. Got a completely different layout now. Uh, same for the alternatives on the task manager that you could go for an icon only view or task manager or window list. Anyway, these uh, options have been around for some time. So what else is new here? And I think a good way to demonstrate that is with a completely different layout. So this is the minimal version of the system installer. So it actually came with very little on there at all. I've installed quite a few snap packages to replace uh, things like LibreOffice, which wouldn't have been pre-installed. The Latte Doc is now included in the application repositories. It's my first time using the Latte Doc and uh, I found it there is so much you can do with the tweaking on there. One could say perhaps too many tweaks, but uh, this is KDE and you can never have too many tweaks. They've uplifted the version of KDE in Live to 19.08.2. I don't think the 1904 version was particularly good. I had a lot of problems with it and you'll notice on the, some of my recordings the audio does glitch and I've been stuck at uh, 30 frames a second. So I'm actually quite excited to try the newer version of KDE in Live to see if that solves some of my problems. The newer version of the Plasma 5.16 desktop brings along quite a few bug fixes and improvements to the theming. I went a little bit over the top with the number of themes I installed here and I had a bit of a play around in one video looking at some of them. There's a microphone indicator in the system menu to show when you're recording audio. The Eliza music player has been added to the distribution repositories. It's not really a music player I'm familiar with. Something I was reading about it, it supposedly uses the results from the Balu file searches, so it could potentially be a bit quicker at indexing the music collection. Although you still get the option there of refreshing the music collection and going through the configuration, setting the music path, so I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced about that, but yeah, I've just added a few albums and plays alright. But I'm not sure there's enough here to convince me to switch from Clementine. And one of the last notable changes to the desktop is there is improved support for app images. Although I suppose that's pointless to mention since Ubuntu favor snap packages. When you try and install Chromium in Ubuntu 1910, or well this goes for any of the derivatives, the dev package forces the snap package to be installed. So yeah, you've got no choice but to go with the snap package. 
I did have an issue with the extensions not being installed in Ubuntu, but uh, for some reason in Kubuntu I haven't had that issue. There was permission issues on one of the download folders. Whilst that issue may not affect everyone, one noticeable issue that will affect all Kubuntu users is the awful mouse cursors. So they've just gone back to the basic theme, whereas I have the Breeze theme mouse cursors on other applications. And that really is a prominent issue with snaps, that some applications are missing parts of the theme. Weirdly, in the Inkscape snap, I do have the nice Breeze mouse cursors, but some awful theming for the menus. So you can't win. You get one part right, but uh, not all of it. On the LibreOffice snap, I do have the nice theming, but again with the awful mouse cursors. But as far as the rest of the theming goes with the Qt and GTK applications, it's perfectly fine. So it's a shame that Kubuntu missed out on the Plasma 5.17 desktop, but fortunately it's already available in the Backports repository, if you feel like adding that to your system. Well, instructions are included there, and I'll just give you a link in this page in the video description. Looking at the application versions in the repository there, 5.17 certainly seems to be available. But otherwise, with the Plasma 5.16 desktop, I found it perfectly fine and usable. I've been running the 5.16 desktop in Kubuntu 19.04 for some time now, and yeah, it's been fine. I've got nothing really to complain about. So that was a look at Kubuntu 19.10. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.